This is Tuesday, February 2nd, 2021. Thank you for joining me for this edition of uh, Genuine Diamonds NAR. We're feeding the plant. My neighbor Mac brought his uh, skid steer and he is feeding ore into the diamond recovery plant. So I'll show you where he scoops it up here in a minute where we've got it stockpiled. But after it goes through this large rotary trommel, the oversized rocks come down here, the oversized. Uh, you can see the large grate in this trommel, and nearly everything drops down through it. But there are, you know, this is uh, volcanic rock, and we dig it up, and some of it turns to almost like dirt. And when you wet it, it's just mud, and it goes right on through, but some of it is rock and it needs to be broken up some and you can see it tumbling around in there the water and ore come in that chute at the far end and tumble around in the scrubber and then what falls through this rotary trommel the, the grate goes down this chute into the lower plant and we have another rotary trommel here. And uh, we'll go take a look and see how things are running over here. Well, Mac's job is feeding the plant. Mine is to make sure everything runs smoothly. So it rolls around in this trommel a little bit. And then it drops through the finer screen on the left. So everything under an eighth inch drops through here. And this is jigging, pulsing up and down. Uh, it makes my hand bounce. And that water is cold. Uh, it was 27 degrees here this morning when we woke up, and it's about 41 now. Uh, so it pulses with this rubber tire jig that moves in and out. So there's four one-foot squares, four separate backs that jig. And the other two on this side also pulse with the rubber tire jig. You've got an eccentric motor that makes that go in and out. And uh, it slides on this slide bar and moves this side. There's a slide bar over here too. So uh, that, that's how all that works. So uh, the eighth inch and smaller drops through this size. Uh, quarter inch and smaller drops through this size. And then the bigger stuff goes to this oversize. So you can see it rolling around in there. You see it coming down the chute and rolling around the spray bar washes it as it rolls. And uh, he's feeding some more ore into the plant right now. Way up top there. So it's kind of gravity fed down through here. He drops it in and there's a pump pumping water from the pond. And the water comes in. We have another pump that operates this lower system. And then this oversized material comes down here, and this is a gold and diamond flute. And uh, it goes out here and down, and it piles up, and I get the excavator later and scoop that up and refeed it into the plant. So it gets another chance in case there's a, a diamond encased in this. By running it through it again, it, it gives it a chance to break it up and release the diamond in there. And then we can catch the diamond the second time around. So we try to have no diamond left behind. In fact, when the plant came from South Africa, it just had four valves on the bottom here. They were not these uh, plastic ball valves, but they were brass gate valves. And what you were supposed to do after running for 15 minutes was shut down and just open those valves and dump everything on the ground. Well, I, got, I felt like the material was fine enough. I mean, the, the bottom screen wasn't fine enough. It was letting some diamonds go through. So I put different valves on here because it took forever to get the gate valves open and closed, the ball valves open and closed quickly. And the vats on this side get a lot of sand and silt because the smaller stuff goes through. And they 
they tend to plug quickly to fill up with fans in the back. And so I, as an old retired plumber, I devised to, to run over here and the two far baths with the fine material come down with water. I've got the valve partly open. The other two pipes, I don't open them until the cleanup when things are shut off. So you've got kind of a, a sand and silt and fine diamond coming into here with water. And this pump pumps it up and it goes over here to my truck and trailer. And so, okay, this is full now and I need to switch it. So we're pumping that, that sand and silt into here. And I will fill all these buckets. And yesterday I jigged 46 buckets and got some good heavies out of it. So there were things I wouldn't have wanted to miss. Uh, garnets and spinel and oxide. And uh, so my wife will look through it and see if there's diamonds in it. But uh, this is real fine material and the plant was designed to throw this away. But I say no diamond left behind. I just don't want to lose any. So our, uh, our silk, the light material, goes out this pipe. Let me, let me rerun where we're going here so we don't get lost. Right, the, the dirt and the water go in there we come through this tunnel and we've got a mud flurry that comes down this chute. And the mud flurry goes in here and the mud, the sand, and the silt, and everything under 1 8 inch goes on this side and is good. All the heavy material drops to the bottom of these two one-foot square pans. Everything light washes off with the water and the mud and right on down and in here to a settling pond where the silt will pile up at that end and the water runs over here to these pumps and one pump sends things back to the pond where the water came from. The other two pumps provide water for this sluice to keep things moving. One pump operates this uh, hillbilly spray bar I made out of a uh, wet dry vac uh, vacuum nozzle and uh, the other pump is split into two pipes and uh, sends water to keep this all moving downstream here because there's a lot of material. It takes a lot of water to move it. So uh, there's actually five pumps that operate this plant. One for here, one for here, one for the slower plant, one for the upper plant that he's feeding, and the other one is a return water pump. So, uh, it's going to get up to 50s here today. I'm, I'm working with a long sleeve shirt on and a short sleeve shirt under it. If I get hot later, I can take that long sleeve shirt off and you'll be out here in a, a t-shirt working. But I put my hand in cold water so often, it keeps me cooled down pretty well. We can run this plant for about two hours and then shut down and clean it out. So we started at 10 a.m. Because it was so cold this morning, we wanted a late start. We run from 10 a.m. to noon and take a two-hour break so I can clean up the plant. And then uh, we're going to run again from 2 to 4 this afternoon. And it doesn't get dark till almost 6 o'clock now. So everything's running fine. I have to constantly watch this because I have to adjust these valves. Um, if I don't put enough water in here, it fills up with mud. Because I've got a valve open and draining water. So I'm feeling water out the bottom of it to keep the sand flush out the bottom. But, so I have to add water, but when I open that valve, it robs water from the spray bar here. So you don't want to take too much water from the spray bar or it won't wash these screens out. 
and you don't want to put too much water on this side or this will begin to back up and plug. So you just kind of have to adjust the valve. Uh, let's go back over and see where Mac is getting the material. The rocks are still rolling out of the oversize here. And Mac will come in and scoop up these large pieces of lamprey and feed them back in. And rolling around the trommel, they'll break down and release the diamonds that are in it. So he'll get around here and, and scoop that up and refeed all that material. So nothing's lost. We'll, we'll just run it back again, give it more time in the scrubber, more time to break down. So we do have some ore stored here. Uh, this is a log retaining wall. You can kind of see it here. I uh, I cut the trees. <laughs> Used to be right in here, a bunch of pines and oaks and things. And I cut them and I built a log retaining wall. And then I put plywood along the side and plywood down at the bottom to make an ore storage bin. So he can come in here and scrape the ore right off of the plywood and push right up against this log plywood wall and that way they'll have something sturdy to push against to get a, a good full bucket. Oh, here's an interesting piece of ore that has the black gothite limonite in it. But, uh, and here's some trinity clay, the, the red and the green trinity clay right there by the gothite. Very interesting the way that all is laid in there together. So anyway, uh, we will run that through the plant a little while. Uh, for now, he's, he's taking ore from across the way. We had it stockpiled and put under those tarps so that it would be dry when we wanted to run it. And uh, so he's scooping it up and bringing it to me from, from over there. I think things are running pretty smooth this morning. And this isn't too noisy with the lamprey. When we ran a lot of river rock in there, uh, they bang around and make a lot more noise, like tennis shoes in a dryer or a belt buckle in a dryer or something. But uh, the big jaspers and river rocks are a lot noisier. Okay. So he's got his skid steer over here and our material is piled up. I think he's working, there's kind of a wet soft spot over there and he's kind of trying to fix that a little bit. Yeah, he's got a little problem with a wet spot. Well, it's winter time and you've got to kind of expect uh, wet ground and that's kind of what we're dealing with. But, uh, he'll, uh, we're, we're in no hurry for more ore over here. He's getting some scooped up now. But uh, it takes this plant a little while to digest what he feeds it, so it's good to give it a little time between, between spoonfuls, between feeding it, let the baby uh, chew it and swallow it. And, uh, he's got a big healthy scoop of ore there. Uh, so he's pushing sideways instead of pushing uphill, because uh, we, we had that stockpiled on a slope for drainage. And when he was pushing uphill to feed, he noticed he was digging into the ground. But uh, by pushing sideways, then he can load it up without getting a lot of grass and dirt and things in it. So, so we'll watch him put this, this load in and then I've got to get back to checking the plant. Probably need to change this bucket over here as well. They, they fill up quickly, so uh, we'll do that. Yeah, this is already full, so we'll get another one filling here. And uh, I'll slide these heavy buckets on up to the front and bring the empty ones back. And uh, there'll be diamonds in it. Uh, here he comes with a load. He's got a few leaves in with it. Oh well, they'll, uh, the plant will follow that as well. That's the problem with working outside in nature. Let's 
see while he's putting it in there what's happening. You see it come down that chute. Probably get the string all dirty. But it comes down the chute and mixes with water and tumbles around in here. And then, uh, both of the falls do the great. You go down that a little at a time kind of trickles it in because you don't want to swamp this it's just overwhelmed the more constant flow is better than just dumping real fast and go so, uh, anyway he's doing a good job a neighbor helping me out here he had the right equipment and the time and willingness to help so it's fun uh, he can he can feed it while i take time to check the plant make sure everything's working right nothing plugs up nothing choked so uh, it almost runs itself, but you kind of got a babysitter to make sure it doesn't mess up. Well, thank you for joining me on this edition of Genuine Diamonds in Arkansas.